So bronchitis is the first form of lower respiratory tract infection we're going to discuss, and that's a bacterial or a viral infection of the trachea or the bronchi. It causes inflammation of the trachea or the bronchi, and the consequence of that is that you cough, and also you produce phlegm. And generally speaking, we would say that if the phlegm is clear in colour, there's not, not a bacterial infection, but if the phlegm is green, gunky and thick, then it's likely to be due to a bacterial infection. There's a wide range of viruses and bacteria that cause this, and they're listed here. The important things here are that they actually, the viruses are very much the same as the ones that cause the common cold. It's just the infection has gone further down into the respiratory tract than just a common cold by itself. The bacteria are the standard bacterial pathogens that we seem to be see repeatedly during lung infections, but just infecting the upper airway, sorry, the lower airways, but not the alveoli in these situations. Pneumococcus, Haemophilus influenzae, Moraxella catarralis, and then there's the atypical pathogens, Mycoplasma pneumoniae and Chlamydiophilia pneumoniae, which behave, in fact, many, much more like a virus than a normal bacterial pathogen. So the symptoms if you have a tracheobronchitis is that you have cough, you have phlegm production, as I said, prurient phlegm tends to suggest a bacterial infection, and again, it's an infection, so you get some systemic symptoms. You have a fever, you feel unwell, you go to bed for a couple of days or so. And when you examine the patient, there aren't many signs. Pyrexia, maybe a little bit of a tachycardia, but there will not be much in the way of lung signs, not unless there's an underlying lung disease. Because tracheobronchitis itself, because it hasn't reached the alveoli, you're not going to hear it when you listen to the lungs. And again, there's no, like upper respiratory tract infection, most patients don't need any, any investigations. Occasionally, if you're worried that this might be a pneumonia, and that is the main differential diagnosis, you might need to do a chest x-ray or a blood test to look for inflammatory markers such as C-reactive protein. And the treatment for most people is actually just wait and get, let them get better. If it's a bacterial infection, you may want to give antibiotics. So in patients who have prurient phlegm or are severely unwell, really quite uh, feeling pretty rotten, or older patients where the risk of allowing a bacterial infection to get hold and become a pneumonia is uh, increased, then you might want to give antibiotics in those circumstances. And, and you won't need anything too complex, an amoxicillin, a clorithromycin, or a doxycycline should be adequate to treat these patients. A very important consideration is that the bacterial tracheobronchitis is a, a very common cause of an exacerbation of chronic lung disease. So this type of infection will cause the underlying lung disease to get worse in patients who have, for example, COPD or asthma or bronchiectasis. And that means the patient will have increased airways obstruction and that will precipitate hospital admission in a significant proportion of patients with increased breathlessness and potentially respiratory failure. And I discussed the infective exacerbations of COPD in another lecture, but there is a 9% mortality associated with these infective admissions to hospital. So in these circumstances, treatment of antibiotics or if it's an influenza A infection, a neuraminase inhibitor is probably going to be very beneficial for the patient. And of course, you need to treat the underlying lung disease. So that's a situation where the infective exacerbation of your underlying lung disease has been precipitated by a bacterial infection of the trachea and bronchi. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to USMLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.